Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Nancy, and uh, this is uh, for Sunday, um, May 17th. And when we're together in worship, by the way, it's the ninth Sunday. We haven't been in the pews, but my prayer is that we are in worship, and I can see you. I can see your faces, and I can imagine being together. And often we start with the psalm, this is the day the Lord has made. And then what do you say? I'm listening. <laughs> I heard you. This is the day that God has made and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. And I have quite a few notes here, so for, forgive me that I have to take a peek at them, but I, I, um, I don't wanna forget anything. <clears throat> Remember we've been chatting about, uh, these sermons aren't about the pastor, that would be, that would be gross. It's about the body of Christ and, and um, my, my role is um, to pray that God speaks through me and to you, actually that bypass me and just may God speak to you today through the scripture and uh, the Holy Spirit. We're gonna talk a lot about the Holy Spirit today. So envision the body, close your eyes and think of the people you usually sit by when you're at church. And if you haven't been in a while, like we haven't, just imagine the people you love and hold them. So put them in your Devon, your Davenport, your coach, so they're with you. And of course, the beauty, the bed, one of the silver linings is we worship with people in other states. So shouts to Floridians and Minnesotans and uh, Ariz Arizonians. And a special shout to two people from Arizona. First, Marlis Olson had a birthday on May 11th. And Marlis is in Arizona with Sarah. So hi in sunny Arizona. And Keith Holm is also in Arizona. So is uh, um, Lori and Gary Perkins, maybe others. And keep Keith in your prayer because he's leaving on Monday, May 18th. And he's um, praying for safe travel and safety. And um, yeah, keep him in your prayers. Let's see. Oh, and another announcement, please. Uh, no, we have different uh, videos. So the children's sermon this Sunday is again with Lois the Lamb and I encourage you to, um, she's going to talk about the 23rd Psalm verse 4, yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And Lois takes on a t hard topic and she, she, she has more wisdom than one would know for a little lamb. Let's see what else. And we'll have communion again today so pause your device if you'd like to get some bread and anything to drink and I have bread and wine and I commune myself and then I invite you to commune yourself and envision Jesus um, right there with you as he always is and let's see any other oh yeah here's another announcement um, this is, I like the idea I hope you do S several people have wedding anniversaries in June and we should do a vow renewal. We can get creative now that we're you know, out here. And on Sunday, I think it's June 7th, I am gonna have a video about renewing your wedding vows and we'll also have a sermon by Bishop Lori. So look at all this cool stuff we can do because we're, we're uh, you know, I'm trying to make the best of it. So plan now to renew your wedding vows on Sunday, the 7th of June. Some have wedding anniversaries in June. Okay. And um, if you have an announcement, call me, 209-1100. Tracy's answering the phone at Messiah at, from her home, but she can check messages, 373-5378. So give us messages from Port Wing or Washburn. And um, now we are going to do uh, a Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving for baptism. This is like confession and forgiveness, but um, during the season of Easter, these are words that we say together. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. And I've shared this with you before. Water may be poured into the font as the presiding minister gives thanks. So in our church building, I would be maybe pouring water into the fonts at First Lutheran and Messiah but we celebrate the joy of our big baptismal font, Shawamagan Bay. So we celebrate the beauty of this big baptismal font. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning, you created all of us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. 
when we did not know the way you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. My favorite line, we begin worship with this. Bathe us, O God, in your forgiveness, your grace, and your love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Satisfy the thirsty. I gotta tell you something. Um, and, and then maybe we can do this with First Lutheran too. Uh, Messiah Lutheran has an active youth ministry team. Several adults have created a packet that kids can pick up tomorrow from 11 to one. And in the packet is a family devotional book. And then there's also a little thing of family discussion questions. And they're not all about, um, God, here's one of them. Do fish get thirsty? I thought of that when I read that. So we really wanna nurture the families and our list is growing. We have about 34 families and now we have already several families in Port Wayne. Praise God, hi you guys. And um, so uh, we'll talk about, more about that later so we can help you have faith encouragement over the summer. Ah, now <laughs> I have a letter to read. And again, I, I do have to watch my time. So I'm gonna go right to it, May 14th pastoral message regarding the Wisconsin Supreme Court ruling, Safer at Home ruling, from six bishops. The ruling happened on Wednesday. Bishops gathered, I don't know how, and by Thursday, our bishop, Lori Scow Anderson, had gathered and written a letter uh, signed by um, the bishop from La Crosse Area Synod, Greater Milwaukee Synod, Northern Great Lakes Synod, East Central Synod of Wisconsin, South Central Synod of Wisconsin, and then our Lori. So those bishops got together, dear friends in Christ. On May 13th, 2020, the Wisconsin Supreme Court lifted the Wisconsin Department of Health Services Safer at Home extension. However, nothing has changed in our level of concern about contracting and spreading the coronavirus via worship and other gatherings in our church. The court decision was based on a contested legal point and not on any change for the need for caution and safety that the pandemic has brought upon us. Counsel from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, a wide range of additional medical experts, the ELCA's guidelines, and other government entities continue to stress the need for restricting all gatherings to under 10 people and attendant safeguards such as distancing and masks. In the midst of confusion after the court ruling, we ask that you remain steadfast in taking precautions to not contract or spread the virus. Please follow the counsel and recommendations stated in the May 12, 2020 ELCA document called Considerations for Returning to In-Person Worship. And their last paragraph they write to all of us and pastors were asked to read this to you. <clears throat> We in the church need to continue to be guided by scripture, our theology, and the best scientific knowledge we can gather. As our state is divided, we stand in unity to prioritize the safety and the well-being of all of our members as we continue in community, yours in Christ, and then the names. These six bishops agree on the need to continue restricting gatherings to under 10 people. For how long? We don't know individual churches will have that freedom to decide. And I'm sharing that with you because First Lutheran and Messiah councils meet this week. Messiah meets 5.30 on Tuesday. Call Jared, our president, 685-8020, and you can join. We're doing it by Zoom. Ken Bodine is the president of First Lutheran Council. And call him and ask how to join their their council is um, uh, Thursday at 9. So our First Lutheran Council and our Messiah Councils will be, um, oh, I want to tell you the names of the council members, but I, I'm going to save that because um, maybe you, 
we'll anyway talk to us because this is a big decision body of christ we're diverse in all sorts of ways but we're called to to um, uh, seek scripture and science and reason to make a good decision so pray which leads us to our sermon <laughs> and our scripture john chapter 14. jesus said to the disciples if you love me you'll keep my commandments and i will ask the father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever this is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive you know him because he abides with you and he will be in you he meaning this spirit of truth the holy spirit i will not leave you orphans says jesus i'm coming to you in a little while the world will no longer see me but you will see me because i live you also will live on that day you will know that and listen to this jesus says i am in the father and you you humans you're in me and i in you they keep my commandments and those who love me and those who love me will be loved by my father and i will love them and reveal myself to them the gospel of the lord thanks be to god let us pray dear jesus especially this day tell us about the advocate Tell us about your Holy Spirit in us and with us right now. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Make the sign of the cross. What do we say? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That scripture, and there's several like that where Jesus starts talking. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. And then, and you are in me, and I am in you. I'm not making that up, that's in scripture. You are in me and I am in you, and I am in the Father, and I am gonna go away, and it's good I'm going away bodily, as then the Holy Spirit is, is with you, and you should be happy because the Spirit is really great, the Holy Spirit. Some call this the divine dance, and I was talking to my spiritual director, and I envisioned, you know, just play with the imagery of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and there's a fourth, person in the dance and it is you so that scripture lends us to envision a, a divine dance we are not separate from god and jesus is begging his disciples to 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 live with him yes after he leaves he's he's begging he's telling them please know that i am in you and i am in the father so we're going to focus on the holy spirit today and um, I want you to remember this sermon. I really want you to remember this sermon on the Holy Spirit. And I do well with acronyms. And the acronym, I'm gonna talk about four, four um, attributes of the Holy Spirit. And the, the word is race. So there'll be a word for R, A, C, and E. I wanna to breathe too, breathe in. And one, even if you forget that, remember this prayer, come Holy Spirit, come. The Holy Spirit didn't leave, but our mind forgets, I forget. And it's such a calming prayer, come Holy Spirit. And as the councils are meeting about church re-entry, um, perfect love casts out fear. So we don't make our decision out of fear. Uh, we pray that make our decisions out of Jesus' love for everyone. And uh, all over scripture, especially Jesus' love for the most vulnerable. But the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, what are those four words? What do they stand for? And um, the word race came to me, and it's I, I get the word from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, and it goes something like this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside the sin that so easily clings to us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. So let us run the race that is set before us. Isn't that beautiful? We are surrounded by our ancestors. We're not alone. And let us run the race. And that's a, I'm gonna call that a metaphor because I'm not saying a, a literal race, but I'm gonna say race is our life from right on now, now until we die. And let's not live it alone. That's the Holy Spirit's desire. Don't be alone. 
And my best example of how you do better with the Holy Spirit is um, a little running story. I'm 61 and in my younger years I, I ran several marathons and I am not a solo gal. I had running buddies and the only reason I ran is that I got I had a date with running buddies and I haven't had consistent buddies. Tina Raquelli and I have run on then I do really well with the buddy that person their body by my side I was by myself running the other day and I felt like I couldn't lift my legs <laughs> I couldn't do a step but if Tina were there I would lift it because I'm I don't want her to get it in front of me so this traveling alongside the Holy Spirit is there all the time we run or live our lives with the Holy Spirit and I'm going to tell you a story about the Holy Spirit, two stories. But my first one is about Eva Livingston. And Eva is 11, or did she turn 12? I got to find out because she had a fabulous birthday. I talked with her dad yesterday. And this is the community. I think this is the spirit. The spirit moves people to love. And you love to love. And her dad said 70 plus cars drove by to say happy birthday because we can't have a party because of the, the coronavirus. The Holy Spirit is there because Eva and their family think we're not alone. And for those of you who don't know, Eva had cancer and lost her arm. And people right away go, oh, that could have been me. Let's, let's be the body of Christ. And I asked Ryan, do you feel God's love in this journey? He said, we do. We feel it when I put something out, uh, when I post something, people say you're in my thoughts and prayers. The whole family feels God's spirit of love. And how is Eva doing? He said, Nancy, she's doing most everything she did before. She dresses herself. Is that, that, that power of love and support is in that family. So God bless them. And of course we all have down days, but they feel the spirit. So I hope you're on the edge of your seat. What does RAC, what do those letters stand for? Um, I'm going to give you the words and then talk about them. Remind, R, remind, A, advocate. C, there are two words that start with C, comfort and counsel, R-A-C-E, encourage. The Holy Spirit does so many things, called so many names, the advocate, the paraclete. And Jesus says the Holy Spirit will remind you. And I'd like to say that's the still small voice that says, you are my beloved child. And we don't hear that enough. We hear, you're not good enough. You're too X, Y, Z. The Holy Spirit reminds us of our identity in Christ. And the Holy Spirit reminds us of the words Jesus taught. And Jesus himself said, all those commandments get boiled down into the greatest commandment. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind and love your neighbor. So anytime we're reminded to love, love, love the most vulnerable, love yourself, the Holy Spirit reminds. R-A, the Holy Spirit is an advocate or a paraclete. And an advocate, what does an advocate do? Sticks up for you. Have you ever felt like no one is sticking up for you? No one is taking your side. The advocate stands up for us and also comes alongside us. That magic of a running buddy imagery. We're stronger with someone right beside us. Not so much ahead, but and the Holy Spirit is that sense of I'm not alone. And there's someone sticking up for us and loving us, going to, the, to God the Father and saying, um, I'm going to intercede for um, you today. The Holy Spirit prays for us with sighs too deep for words. R-A-C, two words that begin with the letter C. The Holy Spirit is known as a comforter and a counselor. When was the last time you needed comfort? And we go to some silly places for comfort meatloaf and uh, mashed potatoes they're okay they do comfort they really do they do for a moment wonderfully and then you think but i want even more than that and this it's not tangible though 
but how will I get comforted by the Spirit? First of all, utter that prayer, come Holy Spirit, come. I need comfort. I feel alone. I feel um, picked on. Or I don't know what to do. I need counsel. We need counsel from wise sources here on earth for sure. And I do believe that there is the still small voice of wisdom when we're quiet and sincerely say, God, I don't know what to do. The Holy Spirit, that's our mantra. Come Holy Spirit, come comfort me, counsel me and the ease and courage. When was the last time you felt discouraged? I'm so discouraged. I don't know when life is gonna get back to normal. I'm so discouraged. and. The depth of discouragement is, um, as we know, it goes to um, clinical depression and anxiety where we need medical help, professional help. And all of us will have some level of discouragement and anxiety and that I'm not replacing the medical community when I say in addition to our, our professionals, the spiritual realm is here for us in the Holy Spirit to encourage through scripture sometimes, through uh, closing your eyes and breathing. So what do those letters stand for again? R-A-C-E, race. The Holy Spirit reminds, the Holy Spirit is an advocate, the Holy Spirit comforts and counsels and encourages. Wow, there are, um, there's an interesting placement in the scripture. Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And do you want to go, oh man, that's hard work. And then right away he says, and I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. They're together, maybe because Jesus knows, Jesus totally knows, you and I deny Christ. You and I seek our own best interests. And uh, you and I um, forget about God altogether. Jesus knows that. No surprise. Don't dwell on that. Um, instead, Say, well, I, it is no longer I who live. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And then we start over. We get forgiven. We, we say, Lord, I blew it. So Jesus says, love. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And I'm going to give you the spirit. So it's a, it's, it is a divine dance. And in the human realm, our dance is screw up. Ask for forgiveness and not take the screw up lightly but not let it drag us down. There's a bird. Not let it drag us down. I live in this dance of um, embraced by the Holy Spirit that reminds you you're God's beloved child with whom God is well pleased because God made you before you do any good stuff. Isn't that a message we want to tell our children and tell everyone? Ah! <laughs> I think I'm about done with the sermon and then we have a few more things to bring up Holy Communion today. Um, I want to end with the challenge with this uh, sermon. Last week, the challenge was um, the Confirmation Kids Challenge. Do Faith Five and look for God. So I'm just going to um, craft this a little. Look for the Holy Spirit. By the way, they're all the same. They're all the same, but look for ways of being encouraged or being uh, stood up for or being uh, counts, counts, comforted or counseled. One way the Holy Spirit came to Carol Salmon and, and I was through children who um, gave us art. I think the Holy Spirit is in children giving gifts of art. I do the Spirit. I, Carol and I said, wow, what a great Mother's Day. We're not even moms. So may we not restrict the spirit. Look, and how then after you and I have been comforted, maybe then we can offer God's comfort and God's uh, counsel and God's um, advocacy. So it's a pretty exciting walk. And I'm going to have an amen to the sermon, and I will be back with Holy Communion. Can I hear an amen? What we've been trying to do, and we're making this all up, you know, as we go, how does it, how can this really be church? Um, uh, you might want to turn off <clears throat> your device and sing a hymn, sing a song you love, sing anything. I don't have music for you today, but please have your own music. But we will have prayers of the people. 
And there's three parts of our prayers, the world, the community, and yourself. <sighs> you, quite a few of you, maybe all of you, listen to the news on the radio, read about the news in the newspaper, or watch TV news. So there's a lot to pray about right now, <laughs> right? The world. Think of a country that's having a really hard time with the virus. I think I heard about a country and I can't remember. You are smarter than me. Think of all the countries and not just the coronavirus, but think of the world. Think of famine and drought and oppression and say, Lord, in your mercy, you know, bring justice to those places and use me in however you can. Yeah, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And you can turn off the device and pray more for the world if you'd like. Now pray for the community where you are, Florida, Arizona, Minnesota, South Dakota, uh, Port Wing. Pray for your community, Washburn area. The community, pray for the community. And then the faith communities, not just our faith communities. Pray for all the faith communities you know about because they're all in discernment. They're in huge discernment. Someone said, well, if we don't, if we don't open our doors, maybe there'll be no building left. Well, the building will be there, but no church. And then someone else said, um, that's up to the body of Christ. And the body of Christ isn't the boards and the bricks. So it's up to the body of Christ at First Lutheran, the people, at Messiah, the people. And to pray that that Holy Spirit gives us creativity to reach out and touch in new ways. Um, so definitely pray for the councils this week. Pray for the leaders, uh, Ken Bodine, Jared. Oh, you know what? I'm going to tell the names of the council because then you might want to call your council people and say, hey, I got an idea. So at First Lutheran, Ken Bodine, Karen Anderson, Carla Bainbridge, Mary Childs, Lori Guzinski, John Hove, Janet Johnson, Paul Loma, Mike Palmer, Treasurer Clyde Clausen. Give him a call and ask him to join the Zoom meeting. And Ken or I can give you the Zoom info. Messiah Council people, uh, President Jared, and I have a picture of them. Heidi Harvey, Carol Salmon and Bob Lease, Julie Vadness, Bev Dean, Jeff Olson, Treasurer Cheryl Fallis, Kelly Burrell, Travis Tulowitzki, Tom Mitchell. Pray for your leaders and, and ask, ask if you can come to the council meeting. And then we ask for discernment. I can't believe the birds today. I'm, yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? That we get to have that nature. It's like God is saying, I am with you. You guys will be fine. You'll be okay because God holds you. So we have our prayers and then we pass the peace. Turn off your device if there's more than one under your roof and give the peace to each other. And if you live alone, turn off your device and call someone. Say, hi, it's, uh, it's me. I'm watching church, but I can't pass the peace on my, uh, well, I could give, I love, I have, I have my animals and they're alive and wonderful. But if you feel like a human connection, if you live alone, um, pass the peace with someone on the phone. Peace be with you and also with you. Or if you live with a group, think of a person you know who lives alone and call them. Hey, we're thinking of you. We're having church. Cool. Well, thank you. Now, I uh, forgot to push my button. I'm, in a, I, I'm a little worried about the time. Thank you. And now our last... Um, Part of our worship service is um, the Lord's Supper. Hear the words of institution. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and broke it and gave thanks, saying, take and eat. This is my body, my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people. Do this and remember me. Our Lord gives us a meal and a prayer. Wherever you are, let us together pray the Lord's Prayer. 
our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You've all heard these words that I say, this is the Lord's table. God is our host. All are welcome. So the Lord's table now is in your home and you are going to commune uh, yourself or loved ones and I will I'm alone today Robert's gone so I'm by myself although you're with me I but it's just me today so the body of Christ given for you amen I'm given for me and the blood of Christ is shed for all of us and for me and for you amen Mm. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you so that you can go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And let's all say thanks be to God together. Thanks be to God. Amen. So I have a closing prayer for us. And my closing prayer helps us remember the Holy Spirit all week, I hope. <laughs> so please pray with me. <clears throat> Come, Holy Spirit, come. Help us run the race of life with you by our side. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding us, advocating for us, comforting, counseling, and encouraging us. Then by your power, use us to be vessels of your love to others. On our own, we will fail, we do fail, but with you by our side, with you in us, we can do all things. In your many names, we pray and say amen together. Amen. As you turn off your uh, device, uh, the first thing I want you to do is see if you can remember the acronym. The Holy Spirit, R-A-C-E. The Holy Spirit reminds us of our identity and reminds us of what Jesus taught. And that is basically to really love ourselves and God and others. The Holy Spirit advocates for us, stands up for us, stands next to us, stands by us, intercedes for us. That's all in advocacy, especially for the most vulnerable. The Spirit advocates for us. The Holy Spirit see, comforts, counsels, and he encourages. Amen. Goodbye.